In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption. Grant us courage to take up our cross daily and follow him wherever he leads through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading appointed for this Sunday is from Jeremiah, the 15th chapter. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and take vengeance for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found and I ate them and your words began, became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone because your hand was upon me for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and, if, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the epistle is recorded in Romans, the 12th chapter, beginning at verse 9. Let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who re weep, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. 
if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will reap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, say, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Together we confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Quite a few years ago, a young man I met told me a story about how living his Christian faith, how following those things that he was taught in the Bible cost him a job, but ultimately in the end, he was glad about it. He had graduated from a very important university with a very important business degree, and he got a very important job in Chicago and at the very end of the very first day, it was a long day, as he was leaving at the elevator, he bumped into several of his new co-workers and they were going out for a couple of drinks, they were going out 
to celebrate and they said, come along with us and you can celebrate your first day at work. And the young man, you know, he was happy. He wanted to relax. He was willing to go along. He wanted to celebrate, so why not? And so they take him to a bar not too far from the office building. It wasn't the classiest place in town, but he doesn't think uh, much about it. He is in town and he trusts these new friends. And as the evening wears on, some things begin to happen that begin to disturb him. A couple of his friends come up to him and they they sort of whisper to him that they have some stuff and that he could do a couple of lines of that stuff and it would help him feel good and he could celebrate. But you know, he wasn't a young man who had ever done drugs. He really didn't want to get involved with drugs and he knows that it's, it's wrong. And so he politely refuses. He isn't accusatory, but he says he really doesn't want to accept his offer. And he finally thinks, you know, it's about time I'd better go. And a couple of other of the newfound friends come up to him and they offer to pay for him to have some female company for the rest of the night. And again, he refuses politely and they make it very clear with somewhat harsh tones that he is acting weird, that he is being antisocial and he is kind of disgusted and so he leaves the bar and he goes back to his new apartment. The next day his boss calls him into the office. He has heard about what had happened the previous night and he wonders why this young man didn't join in the celebrations. And the, the guy doesn't really know quite where to start and he just kind of blurts out, well, I don't do those sorts of things. And the boss looks at him in kind of some elevated tones and says, well, why not? And the man, young man, really not quite knowing how to answer the best way, says, you see, I'm a Christian, and that goes against what my parents and my church and the Bible have taught me how I live my life. Now, you've got to keep in mind that this young man did go to church fairly regularly, but he's not a great student of the Bible. Yet in refusing to go along with the crowd, in standing up and saying, I'm a Christian, he begins a journey down a hard path that very few really wish to walk and very few find comfortable. He decided on a course of action which made him seem weird or different, at least to the people he was with that night. One of the things that happened was that very soon he lost his job. His boss called him in and said there was no longer a place for him in the company. And the young man took up his cross and he followed Jesus. As Jesus walks down the narrow road to Jerusalem, he knows what lies ahead. He knows the cross and the death that he is assigned to face are coming. And he says to his disciples, I must go to Jerusalem. I must suffer much from the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. I will be put to death, but three days later I will be raised to life. He had talked a lot about loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and loving your neighbor as you love yourself. But now he is going to do exactly what he has been talking about. He had talked a lot about the kingdom of God, but now it was time to bring the kingdom of God to bear in the lives of people through his death and resurrection, through the reconciliation and righteousness that comes for all people because of what happens on the cross outside Jerusalem and what happens as a result of the tomb being empty. But Peter, hearing those words about death and suffering, 
Peter is offended. Jesus is choosing the harder path, the path of obedience, the path of suffering and dying, and Peter doesn't like it. It's scandalous to think that the Savior should lose every dignity and honor, even lose his own life, let alone lose it on the cross, an instrument of shame and dishonor. Peter had always assumed that Jesus would overcome his enemies with glory and honor, not being despised and rejected as a criminal and being put to death at the hands of his enemies. The harder path isn't the way that Peter saw it happening at all. But Jesus gave no thought to his own safety. He doesn't have any private ambition. He has only one thing in mind. You can say that he is totally dedicated to do what God the Father sent him to do, and not even Peter's rebuke is going to put him off, as tempting as it might be, even to Jesus, to take the easier way out. And surely today's gospel tells us that being faithful to Jesus includes taking up our own crosses. Jesus speaks plainly, if any of you wants to come with me, you must forget yourself, carry your cross, and follow me. The words forget yourself, deny yourself, as you might put it, are really very radical. They are easy to say, but they're really not always easy to do. When, and it's true, Jesus calls Matthew to follow him, we do find that there is an instant reaction. There is total obedience. And it's true when Jesus goes to the fishermen and he says, follow me, they get up and they follow him. But when it comes, for instance, to the rich man who wants to know how to be saved and Jesus tells him to leave behind what's dearest to him, his riches, and follow, it's too hard for him to do. Discipleship involves letting go, leaving behind, giving up what stands between Jesus and us, following without conditions, and not always knowing where Jesus will live or what the consequences will be of following him. Discipleship does require determination. When the going gets tough, obedience calls us to stay with Jesus, his church, the people who are fellow disciples. Jesus is calling us to encourage and help one another as we realize that he is calling us to do that as his holy people. Discipleship means that we place ourselves at his disposal. His plans are our plans. His will is our will. His ways are our ways. Make no mistake about it, Jesus is saying to his followers, becoming a disciple is a radical step and being a disciple demands radical commitment. If any of you wants to come with me, you must forget yourself, carry your cross and follow me. And for Jesus, the cross meant suffering, ridicule and pain. And he took up that cross willingly in obedience to his father. Likewise, when Jesus talks about a disciple carrying a cross, he means that as a byproduct of being a disciple of Jesus, there may indeed, in fact probably will indeed, be sacrifice, making choices, facing ridicule, having to deal with suffering and pain. But a disciple takes it up gladly because of his or her commitment to Jesus and in obedience to Jesus' call to follow. The disciple is happy to do that. This kind of forgetting oneself can show, its, can show up in a many different ways. And Paul gives us a few examples in today's reading from Romans 12. He says, love must be completely sincere. Love one another warmly as Christians. Be eager to show respect for one another. 
Serve the Lord with a heart full of devotion. Share your belongings with needy fellow Christians and open your homes to strangers. If someone has done you wrong, do not repay him with wrong. Never get revenge. Try to do what everyone considers to be good. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them a drink. And just in this one passage alone, there's a fair amount of forgetting your own needs and putting the needs of others first. Even the needs of your enemies and even your need to get revenge or seek justice are put behind. Now, we all know from experience that it is not easy to deny oneself, to take up a cross and follow Jesus. It's far easier to avoid conflict. It's far easier to keep quiet. It's far easier to just sort of sit back. It's not easy to follow Christ and be regarded as different, a fool. You know, again and again though, because keeping in mind that we are sinners who live in a sinful world, we will fail at this. And this is why, this is why salvation isn't ultimately something that comes from us carrying our cross. Salvation is something that comes from Jesus doing it. Because if it were up to us carrying our cross, that we would fail on a daily basis. We would fail miserably. We would let the cross drop. We would stumble and fall. And I think all of us have, as Christians have found that that cross bearing, although we're called to do it, it's a byproduct of our baptism, it's a byproduct of being believers in Jesus, that we have found that we have done it miserably from time to time. And we also have found that it's only by the goodness of God that we are able to do what he calls us to do. Keep in mind that we focus more than on what our Lord has done for us. The good news of taking up the cross doesn't mean that we save ourselves, but rather Jesus has done it. Our ability to have service to others, to serve Christ, comes from being called by Christ Jesus. It comes from the reality that he has indeed died on the cross in our place, and the reality that he has risen from the dead in our place, and the reality that means that we have total and complete forgiveness that we have eternal life, that is the promise, that is the reality, and it is in that good news that we are called to follow. It doesn't come from within us, it comes from Jesus, and from the promise that he is with us every step of the way. Remember, Jesus is the one who took up the cross. Jesus is the one who forgives us, we only do as a byproduct of service to him as a reflection of what he has done for us. Now may the peace that passes all our human understanding, may it keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. For our faith and faithfulness, especially for those persecuted for the cause of Christ, and for our strength in time of trial, and for us to persevere in grace in the day of trouble, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the church, Jerusalem on high, our mother in Christ, until Christ is fully formed in us. For the pastors who serve us, that they may be faithful stewards of God's mysteries, and for those at home and abroad who bring the message of salvation to those who have not heard, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our president, our governor, and all legislature, legislators and civil servants, for those who must render judgment and impose punishment upon lawbreakers, and for those who work for peace among the nations, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy for favorable weather and for those who tend the soil and harvest its fruits, 
for business and industry, service workers and artisans, for generosity toward those in need, and for the unemployed and underemployed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those, Mary, that they would live in fidelity to their vows and promises, for parents as they teach their children to know and love the Lord, for single adults that they may find fulfillment in their service to others, and for our lives together, showing the love of Christ one to another, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For grace to take up the cross and follow the Lord wherever he leads, for courage in the face of challenge and adversity, and for compassion and harmony in our life together, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For holy lives of faith, for faith to receive the Lord's gift of his flesh and blood in the holy sacrament, and for this holy assembly that we may present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our remembrance of the saints and grace to follow their example of faith, for God to grant us a place with them in their fellowship, and for our eternal life in God's kingdom without end, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, you have forgiven our sins and delivered us from death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to pour out your mercy upon us and grant to us all good things needful to this body and life and keep from us all things harmful. From you, through you, and to you are all things, O Lord, Holy Father, mighty God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whom with the Holy Spirit you are one Lord, one God, now and forever. Amen. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>